Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to another Dungeons and Dragons character conversion, Star Wars Week. Yesterday we did a generic Force user, and today I want to take a look at a famous Force user from the video games. More specifically, Galen Merrick, aka Star Killer, from Star Wars The Force Unleashed. A quick summary of who Star Killer is before we get into the build. Star Killer was Darth Vader's secret apprentice. And Darth Vader acquired Galen after the Sith Lord killed Galen's father and mother. Well, killed his father in a lightsaber combat. Galen Merrick's mother and father were both Jedi. Which, if you know Star Wars lore, that's a bit strange for two Jedi to be married to each other. Since the Jedi don't believe in showing love and affection. So having two married Jedi seems very strange. Almost like they stopped being Jedi after uh, Order 66. Or even before, since according to the lore of the Forced Unleashed, Starkiller is a little bit older than Luke. Now, I don't... I have never played The Forced Unleashed, so I don't know specifics of the lore within this franchise. But, according to the wiki, after Starkiller Galen regains his memories of his childhood and goes to attempt to beat Darth Vader, of course he fails, the Resistance, the Rebels, see him as a sort of martyr and take on the family crest of Galen Merrick's family as their own symbol from then on out. And I'm sure you recognize the symbol of the Rebel Alliance. Now, how's that for a symbol's backstory? The symbol of the Rebels came from the Merrick family. Galad Merrick, Starkiller. A Sith turned Jedi. That's honestly amazing that they put a backstory into their lore for the Rebel Alliance and their symbol. That's fascinating. Hilarious, but fascinating. So, now that we have that, let's go ahead and get into the build, because I'm sure plenty of you want to play as the Apprentice, Galen Merrick. The Star Killer. Starting things off with the point by system. Strength, Constitution, and Wisdom will all be a 10. Intelligence is a 13. Charisma, a 14. And Dexterity, a 15. Galen Merrick is a human. So we're going to go ahead and use a variant human. Dexterity is going to be increased by 1. And Intelligence will be increased by 1 making them 16 and 14, respectively. Speed, 30 feet. Skill, will go with persuasion. Languages, of course, it's going to be common. And one other, whichever one you think is best. For your feet, we're going to go with telekinetic. And we're going to get the full power of the telekinetic feet because we are actually going to have Mage Hand right off the bat which will be increased in power thanks to Telekinetic. Since if we have Mage Hand beforehand, we get an extra 30 feet on the Mage Hand's distance, which we will be getting Mage Hand 
from our class. <clears throat> Moving on to background. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Knight of Solomnia, which is Unearthed Arcana currently. This gives us proficiencies in athletics and survival, a musical instrument of choice, and one more language. And just like backgrounds currently, we get a feat now, a very specific feat, Squire of Solomnia. We get martial training, so we will have proficiency in martial weapons, which is very good because the class that we're going to be starting out with does not get proficiencies with martial weapons. We get Defensive Rider. It's going to be harder for us to get knocked off of our mount. So whether that is a horse, a speeder, whatever, it's going to be hard to knock us off. We also get Encouraging Rally, which not exactly important. It's still a pretty good feature to have. Starting things off with classes, we're going with Sorcerer. This is how we get our Mage Hand to start out with. So that Telekinetic will give it an extra 30 feet. D6 hit die. Get to start off with only 6 hit points, unfortunately, since we don't have a Constitution to speak of. But we do get some skills to go with it. So we'll get Deception and Intimidation. Our spellcasting ability is Charisma, and our sorceress origin is Aberrant Mind. Psionic spells, we get Arms of Adar, Dishonored Whispers, and Minus Sliver automatically added to our spell list, which do not count against the number of spells we can learn. Remember that. Telepathic Speech is another feature that we get, so that's pretty good. We're going to multi-class into Rogue. Starkiller was trained to be an assassin for Darth Vader. So, yeah, that's going to be quite obvious to pick Rogue. In all honesty, I wanted to go with Rogue first because of the extra hit die, which is a D8 instead of a D6. But I wanted to make sure that we got the full force of the telekinetic feature. Extra hit points, 1d8 plus the constitution modifier per rogue level. Proficiencies in light armor, acrobatics for our skill, and thieves tools for our tools. For expertise, get deception and persuasion, and you'll get sneak attack and thieves can't. Level 2 sorcerers get fount of magic. Level 3 sorcerers get meta magic options. Go with heightened spell and twin spell. For your psionic spells at 3rd level, you'll get Calm Emotions and Detect Thought. Pretty useful stuff. Level 4 Sorcerers get an Ability Score Improvement. Go ahead and increase your Charisma by 2, making it a 16. Level 2 Rogues get Cunning Action. Level 3 Rogues get a Roguish Archetype. Again, you've been trained to be Darth Vader's Assassin. You kill for him. So we're going to go with the roguish archetype known as Assassin. You'll get bonus proficiencies in Disguise Kit and Poisoner's Kit, and you also get the Assassinate feature. You also have the feature Steady Aim from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which is honestly a pretty useful skill. At level 4 Rogue, we get another ability score improvement. Increase your Charisma by 2 more points, making it an 18. Level 5 Sorcerer gets more psionic spells. Hunger of Hadar and Sending are now added to your spell list automatically, and it does not count against the spells that you already know. Level 6 Sorcerer gets psionic sorcery and psychic defenses thanks to the Aberrant Mind Origins. Level 7 Sorcerer gets more psionic spells, Eovald's Black Tentacles, and Summon Aberration. Pretty neat. Level 8 Sorcerer gets another ability score improvement. Go ahead and increase your wisdom by 2, making it a 12. This is roughly around the time you know that the Sith and the Dark Side of the Force are actually not the good guys. And you've probably regained your memories at this point of your past life and what Darth Vader did to your father. Level 5 Rogue gets Uncanny Dodge. Level 6 Rogue gets more Expertise, Grab Athletics, and Acrobatics. 
That's unfortunate. Hold on. There we go. Don't know how that happened. All right, level nine sorcerer, more psionic spells. Rari's telepathic bond and telekinesis. Now we are definitely a powerful force user. Hmm. Uh, is unfortunate. Very weird. Hold on. How do I fix that? There we go. Okay. Level 10 Sorcerer. More metamagic. Let's go ahead and grab Distant Spell for our metamagic option. Level 7 Rogue gets Evasion. Level 8 Rogue gets the Feet. Martial Adept. Brace and Sweeping Attack should be the maneuvers you choose for this feat. And finally, level 12, Sorcerer, gets another ability score improvement, increase your dexterity by 2, making it an 18. And that is it for the build itself. Now let's go ahead and get into the spell list. These are the spells that I recommend you would use for your Star Killer, but you can change them out as you see fit. Starting up with Cantrips, we have Lightning Lure, True Strike, Mage Hand, of course, Shocking Grasp, Blade Ward, and Gust. First level spells will be Sleep, Catapult, and Magic Missile. Second level, Mind Whip and Knock. Third level, Lightning Bolt and Haste. Fourth level, Confusion Charm Monster. Fifth level, Bigby's Hand and Dominate Person. And sixth level, Call Lightning. It is said that Starkiller is very proficient in using lightning attacks when using his false powers, rivaling the, uh, I think it was Palpatine, Darth Sidious, whoever Darth Vader's master is, Starkiller rivals them. I think it's his name is Palpatine. It's been a while since I've done the Star Wars franchise. At least gone over it. I know the basics. That's about it. Anyway. That's his main power is lightning. He can even kill someone almost instantly with it. He is also very good at the mind tricks. So that's why we have dominate person, charm monster, sleep. Those abilities mimic what Starkiller can do within the games. Yes, even putting a person to sleep, just knocking them unconscious. That's nuts. Uh, we also have some typical uh, force powers. Mage Hand, of course. Bigby's Hand is an upgraded version of Mage Hand. And we also have Haste, which can speed you up. Gus just pushing back a lot of people. Blade War to deflect a blade coming at you. Just a lot of good abilities here that I think are really useful for a Force user in general. But they fit Starkiller just as well. And with that, that is all the time I have for you today, my dear viewers. I do hope that you enjoyed this build for Star Killer. And if... Uh, I'm not going to have an... I wish I could have another video, but I am not going to post another video tomorrow for the 6th. We're just going to do the 5th for, t for this year. But I do hope you enjoyed nonetheless... Until next time, this has been Drehan, and I am offline. May the Force be with you.